biographical high relief of the Dominican genius Osvaldo Garcia de la Concha. The only reason that helps us to think with faith about the future of America is, without a doubt, the extraordinary singularity with which God sometimes gives us the gift of certain and privileged men. Every time we evaluate the future of our races and gestation, every time we stop to look at so much embarrassment to civilization that sickens the spirit of our impulse towards collective greatness, when we witness by force so much formality with an atmosphere of empire and so many gods with an undisciplined core and absolute lack of the creative pain that the universal fertilization of thought entails, we feel bitterly sad. But here is that appearance or positive emergence, although sporadic, of a series of enlightened brains that takes root so deeply in our consciousness that it does not allow us to doubt for a single moment this new race that tends to conquer the hegemony, the hegemony of the planet, hegemony of the planet. There is always something marvelous in the development of the corruption of men and in the era of sociological states. As if we discovered in disordered towns the same expression of the natural conflict of heterogeneous fields, that is, with different times in a same in a same place in space where they squeeze and expand to culminate in a single time and a single field or with a single morality and a single country dealing with the problem case natural nature solves this problem by vanishing all the fields with their respective geometries disappearing into the one with the most predominant gravitation. People tend towards plentitude, attracted by love through the channels of pain and great social collapses. By all this logic, whenever plas plasmogamy plasmogen plasmogamy Plasmogeny, plasmogeny? Whenever plasmogeny offers us on its silver platter a thinker like Aristotle, a revolutionary like Bolivar, or an evangelizer of multitudes like Jesus, sacrifice is imposed first, the exaltation later. Let's analyze our case in the city of Santo Domingo, Dominican Republic, under the constellation of a zodiac that now reveals itself to us as providential. Osvaldo Garcia de la Concha manifested the sensitive curvature of his elliptical on February 21st, 1878. We believe pertinent to present the author of this work in the three essential aspects of his personality, the man, the teacher, and the philosopher-mathematician. First, the man. He was born poor and died poor. His childhood is unique in that it was like that of all the poor children on the earth. On earth. His father, Augusto Garcia Tejera, initiated him into work just as a Russian father would have done. And until the age of 24, he repudiated school, books, and teachers as if the great love that consumed him had been outlined in his adolescence. Later in his infinite anxiety for a free school, for a text that did not disagree with nature, and for an ideal teacher capable of all universal understandings, of restless, tropical, extroverted youth, he never sensed the unfolding that made him become silent, pensive, and sad. He entered the school as if to find himself in facing the error. Five years were enough for his bachelor degree. One bold intelligence, when he became a subject, it always seemed to him that everything else depended on knowing how to deduce from the first. Then he abandoned it to undergo the rigorous tests with extraordinary lucidity. In 1915, he became a normal teacher. And seven months later, he obtained a degree in mathematics at the National University of Santo Domingo. On February 4th, 1908, he was appointed professor at the school at the Escuela Normal 
Superior until September 13 of 1926. He was acclaimed by the first student demonstration in our history as the spiritual director of the same school where he had dazzled his disciples for 18 years. Never had the Republic been the teacher of such Never had the Republic been the teacher of such a beautiful and spontaneous school movement. The executive branch, then represented by Horacio Vasquez, responded to the clamor of the youth, bringing Professor Osvaldo Garcia de la Concha to the direction of the normal school. Let us leave for a moment the presentation of his pedagogical work in secondary education after this event. And let's exhaust the personality of the man first to enter to enter that of the teacher later as a citizen he was never contaminated by political banners he was indifferent all his life to the dispute between honorable men not because he had no aptitude for republican debates but because his spirit was already engaged in an even greater struggle such as the mathematical the mathematical explanation of the intimate structure of the universe, modest as a Tibetan, simple as a Hindu. He nevertheless had to resist the genius that overpowered him in the vertigo of his birth, but in silence. As perhaps there had been no other man, he dispelled with abandon, but in silence the great bitterness of his life and the great fainting of his spirit in an astonishing collusion with liquor and drugs. No one could have endured the outburst of his drunkenness, always doing his duty. There was a fear for his existence. He was found to be in serious condition on more than one occasion. But that man who in reality seemed chained by his vice when he was carried away in the direction of the normal school on the shoulders of the youth had long ago turned his back forever to what had been a physiologically and spiritually uncontrollable passion. The astonishment was unusual. Legends were woven around his aestheticism. His will was disgust. He praised himself with admiration, but no one realized that he had left, not left the liquor but that it had changed his nature. His great abstractions were his great intoxications, and in the cup of the unknown, he drank the last drop of excellency. In the neighborhood of San Miguel, his simple house, his wife, his four children, without the comforts of an observatory or library or instruments to sensitively to sensitively study the phenomenon of light speeds, electricity, and magnetism, Garcia de la Concha wrote La Cosmica, and in that intimacy of his life, he spoke to his disciples about art, music, philosophy, science, spirit, civics, everything that was submitted to his analysis obtained a wonderful explanation. The atmosphere is still full of his anecdotes, his kindness, his selflessness, his strange and slow behavior at night. The same streets, the same bench in the public square, almost always alone, walking slowly, his body slightly bent, with a sweet gaze like that of a saint. It would seem that this man was silent in, this deep, in the deepest recesses of his heart about a great pain or that the full weight of the most formidable revelation that any brain had contributed to human knowledge was weighing on his spirit. From Bahorkno we quote, we quote, During the last administration, he was laid off from his high position for defending school autonomy. They say that President Vasquez, arrogant in power, called to reprimand him. And Garcia de la Concha, a man of dignity, did not tolerate the, the reprimand. He was then stripped of the position he held and condemned to misery. Of an evangelical love, when he saw himself betrayed by the teachers who signed with him the pro school and university autonomy manifesto, which cost him his life, he said nothing. However, 
He dearly loved his land, and knowing that outside of his environment, his personality would grow when he spoke in any university in South America or Europe, he preferred to stay and die in his homeland, since he always said that man's essentialist lack of culture was general. Man's essentialist lack of culture was general. This was Osvaldo de la Concha, the man. Let us now contemplate Osvaldo de la Concha, the teacher. Part 2, the teacher. The teacher. At the normal school, at the normal superior school, at the normal superior school of Santo Domingo, he illuminated the classrooms for more than 21 years. He was never the master repeater of classical texts, nor did he support the precepts of popular teachings, because he understood that what was eminently necessary for the spirit was the ability to understand all the problems of nature, not the congestion, not the congestion of knowledge that had created the superfluous intellectual with the pretense of being a sage, but the supreme law of the act extracted from the very depths of the phenomena, which would allow the student to solemnly enter all the cosmological precincts with the mathematical culture in the brain and with great love in the soul illuminated by the flash of God. Also in the chair of mathematics faculty of the National University and prestigious by him for 15 years, his work was formidable. He assumed responsibility for 11 subjects without special remuneration. Higher algebra, differential calculus, integral calculus, rational mechanics, analytical geometry, mathematical astronomy, mathematical physics, analytical geometry dealing with plane and space, rectilinear and spherical trigonometry, chemistry, and general mechanics. When the law only required two for each professor, his death caused a, de a desert in the faculty of mathematics that will not be resolved for a long time. His pedagogical doctrine could not be other than the expression of the creator in actu of the spirit possessed in the dazzle of his universal capacity. The modern pedagogue said the teacher's, com the teacher's contemporary says one has to be a great craftsman capable of all the sciences and all arts superiorly constituted as an in inexhaustible spirit it is love it is light it must be all of them he explained Let us extract from one of its most beautiful pages, one of his most beautiful pages, this enormously, this enormous and lapidary paragraph. The truth, the idea consciously acquired through logical reflection, the rationalist method wisely executed by the ideal teacher, by that apostle, whose spirit was always an amphora, am, amphora, Emperor, amphora of love, light of consciousness, by the universally cultured man, that in reality nothing exists by itself, but as a fact accomplished within the very heart of nature. This is the true pedagogy, the true method. Wise universal teachers who can direct the concept and develop man within the seed of life and above all to get him out of this dualism with which humanity is currently frivolizing through Paris without understanding perhaps the greatness of France. His disciples say among other things that he spent a year in class developing the concept of the sensible horizon and the rational horizon and that it was only when the time for the test arrived that they realized perfectly well that they had heard everything from the lips of that teacher. Nothing would have interrupted his Pythagorean work 
if by the acclamation of all the schools of Santo Domingo, he had not been elevated to the direction of the higher normal school as a reward for his virtues, his morals, and his hermetic discipline on September 13 of 1926. It was a transcendental event, a student demonstration toward the streets of the capital with posters and proclamations. There were frictions, agitations, public statements, and that motley youth to which the worker also joined in a spontaneous and logical fellowship. As if by proclaiming to Pre Professor Garcia de la Concha, spiritual director at Vitum, at the town, I had the luminous vision of the apostle who later confronted the public powers in demand for school autonomy until that until had not been claimed as a social need by any other apostle of education. The executive branch was not deaf, so the lawyer Osvaldo de la Concha, Garcia de la Concha, developed his pedagogical plan with great difficulties since the American military plan imposed by the armed intervention was in effect. He drafted a simple method, the simplest possible, but which contained the universality of all the capabilities of the spirit. He laid the foundation of a special economic organization for public education. He created a body of laws that would allow the autonomous functioning of all schools and carried out a complete study of the current state of education to imprint in all its sectors the new essentialist orientation of method, 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 methodical pedagogy, pedagogy. His work also unpublished and that will have to be published. In fact, on December 29, 1928, he surrendered the pub to public responsibility with the pro school and universal the university autonomy manifesto whose significance can only be measured by the moral magnitude that that renewing and revolutionary document entailed at a time of full citizen corruption in all sectors of national life He understood that political interference in the educational development of people was an immorality and that without the independence of the Dominican school, it would never be possible to reach positive culture of the masses, but rather intellectual theft by official influences or to that inflated mob of literature or to the doctorate that has never analyzed what is caused in the logic of reasoned law or what is chemotaxis in the intimate functioning of biological phenomena. Then he was dismissed, not only be because of the aforementioned statement, but because he did not want to kneel before the President of the Republic, answering him word by word, admonition by admonition, until telling him in supreme indignation that he was wrong, since a man of shame had sat in the presidential mansion for the first time. The protests arose again. The streets were filled with the same student demonstrations. The columns of the press could not contain the anger that had been provoked throughout the Republic by the injustice committed against the teacher of the youth. Commission, commissions went up to the palace. Letters were written. The strike was organized, but the executive branch remained deaf and inexorable this time. Because the usual henchman had poisoned his conscience by making him believe that it was of a revolutionary outbreak, Horacio Vasquez, for whom have nothing but words for whom, for whom we have nothing but words of forgiveness, as Garcia de la Concha also forgave the men who denied him, could never think that his collapse slept with him in his. Pl Palace. I will die like a good red man, he told us, already in misery, but instead of being overwhelmed, 
he dedicated himself to finishing his work, La Cosmica, with a serenity that fascinated. Let us now enter the last chapter, since the teacher was, since the teacher has fulfilled his sacrifice, his apostolates to feel in the fullness of his infinite satisfaction in the face of the problem that troubled Pythagoras, Kepler, Galileo, Copernicus, Copernicus, Aristotle, Kant, to Descartes, to Newton, and finally to the German scholar from the city of Ulm, Albert Einstein. Part 3. The Philosopher-Mathematician Of an exceptional temperament, eminently humble, abstract, and eccentric, like a Mahatma Gandhi, his work would not have transcended neither in Santo Domingo nor outside of it unless a decisive factor had not been reached, had not reached his intimacy that impelled him and accompanied him to not let himself die in the dawn of his brilliant birth. That factor was, without a doubt, the intervention of Andres Abellino, first of four or five unbreakable disciples later, in addition to his immense love for the wrong humanity, for which he possibly offered himself in the holocaust of a hemlock by which he did not take in a single sip, like Socrates, but drop by drop, in a supreme resignation that illuminated him in the last days of his life. Back in 1910, he wrote his first pages, and although the troubled spirit of the philosopher who made his way with a restless and tormented soul is evident in them, it was not until 12 years later when the preludes to his cosmica became, began to acquire the universal consistency of the relativistic mathematician. From the last nature, the soul, from the last nature, the soul, a critical judgment on Hamlet, or rather, on Ophelia, the Supreme Madwoman, published in 1922, we reproduce, quote, Yes, there is a special physics of simple nature, a simple matter that includes, yes, there is a special physics of simple matter that includes the laws that comprehend the intelligent principle, a physics in short that includes the laws that regulate the intrinsic forms of psychological nature and is necessarily a physics similar to that which governs the regulation of ordinary processes. Therefore, ah, how far we are from living the Ophelia, the true legitimate Ophelia, the original Ophelia that the same poet himself, the creator, contemplates softly dead on the bed of life and offered to pain by the crystals of the waters. We cannot live that Ophelia except among all of us because she is the life of genius and the crystallization of a capricious spawn of nature that contains us all. That Ophelia is the Ophelia who, crowned with the flowers of madness and in a terrifying cry of lucidity, has majestically entered the spirit of all humanity. And this is how, within humanity that lives in the cult of sensitivity, there is no shortage of those who, by virtue of the exercises, have finally lived a more brilliant Ophelia or in a better incarnation than those others contemplate, than those others that contemplate the theater from their patio. In the magazine illustration, Positive Art stands out, quote, Ah, that God in the supreme need of the in the supreme need to create evil as a cause of human good. Feels it and vibrates it in an instant of his eternity, and living it as a repugnance of themselves, engenders that serpent, which, let it be said, was never a monster on the face of the earth, but rather a trembling in the belly of Eve. God has 
God as he is the essence that pulsates in the intimacy of the being of nature itself, while the universe are the soul, the expression of that divine spirit. He cannot be in our thoughts except through our ideological representation, in which the concept that divinizes, divinizes him and consecrates him as a supreme being and creator is absorbed fading away in that dogmatic philosophy. From that point of view, which is the point of view which we will see in the field of such a highly rationalistic philosophy, the idea of God is the most abstract idea, since it understands at the same time as, it ex as its expression, that essence as an expression of universal infinity, it is the simplest idea, it is the infinite genius of creation scattered sporadic work from which a marvelous extract could be made were not however the deeply universalist expression of his positive mathematical culture in october of 1925 monthly magazine x it reads quote and yet we understand that the re relativistic theory in the midst of all its grandeur is nothing more than a sublime error that the angular loss that sustains it in all its architecture, the contraction of matter, it does not resist it. It is, an abs it is absurd to make, it is absurd to imagine the shortening of matter to explain a cosmological fact without having penetrated into the very essence of the phenomena, without having studied it in all possible circumstances, and most especially in the entire existence of the environment in which it, which it occurs. At the foot of this work, his commentator, his disciple, who had shattered his combative and disgust personality as a poet, a revolutionary of the expression and conception of beauty, to dedicate himself to the highest mathematical disciplines of the spirit. Andres Avellino supports energetically this sentence. This dialogue that the professor of mathematics of our university, Mr. Osvaldo Garcia de la Concha, offers us in the divine lips of ultra-terrestrial man. It is nothing more than a masterful way of presenting, vulgarizing it, and making it popular. The concept of Einstein's principle of relativity. The last paragraph constitutes an index of the work he carried out in a book and in which he concludes with astonishing mathematical reality that the highly debated and most accepted theory is an error. Einstein's sublime mistake, as he says to his intimate friends. And don't think that this phrase which is becoming common among us is a gimmicky resource. No, it is a synthetic expression of that marvelous work of his that we will shortly give to the public with the following title, The Cosmic. I go ahead to warn Americans and Europeans for the second time in this turbulent hour of rectifications. Right now, Garcia de la Concha's new science proves it. Others may rectify later but the primacy belongs to this teacher from the west side of the Atlantic, Garcia de la Concha in his retirement in San Miguel for more than 15 years without saying a definitive word had been worrying about solving the problem posed or discussed by the greatest philosophical thinkers of humanity. He followed step by step the Aristotelian conception to whom he does some honor in his work and the Pythagorean one he thoroughly studied the eternal discussion of the immobile ether. He deepened Maxwell's theory and Hertz's experience. He became deeply interested in the theoretical works of Fitzgerald, Lorenz, and Leyden. He beat Herman Wales, Ryman, Gauss, Minkowski, Eddington, and he mastered the conclusions of Newton, Mickelson, and Mori. He knew the scheme of all the geometrics conceived and dedicated himself to the task of his work to demonstrate to science that the last gentleman of thought, Albert Einstein, was an error. 
it would not it would have to be quite difficult however extensive to explain the essential foundations of his new theory of formal and intrinsic relativity found on the spiritual origin of matter or on time as the cosmic factor par excellence however let's make a piece of history because it is necessary for it to be known throughout the world that Osvaldo Garcia de la Concha had been public, publicly rectifying and correcting Einstein and that because he had to destroy all his prize winning rel relativities without understanding them by the Academy of Europe by the academies of Europe every time he was rectified he has always done so in the same sense indicated by the Dominican mathematician which may be natural since Einstein to arrive at the true conception of relativistic mechanics necessarily has to conclude as he concludes however with regard to the elliptical coefficient and the mathematical and philosophical foundations with which La Cosmica culminates in all its magnificent transcendence on November 15, 1929, his message to, Alberto, to Albert Einstein was read over the radio in an assembly hall of the University of Santo Domingo and under the auspices of the National Association of University Students, he declared 15 fundamental points contrary to his theory of special and restricted relativity. As the reader will be able to verify in chapter 2 of La Cosmica, which serves as an ideological index of the, of the same. Once again, the, licen, licentiate, the licentiate Al, Albert, the licentiate Andres Avellino, his disciple par excellence, and perhaps his logical successor, drew the attention of men in the early 1930s in a work published in the first newspaper of Santo Domingo, the listing Diario, whose title we copy, quote, The Space of Einstein and the Space of Garcia de la Concha, Triumph, triumph of Dominican Science. Einstein declares that he is trying to reach what Garcia de la Concha has achieved. The Dominican genius surpasses the German genius, and from which we extract these paragraphs conclusive. 1. Einstein begins to get bored of the ether. Garcia de la Concha has not been able to get bored of it because he has never needed it in his conception of space. Point 2. Einstein has also not been able to answer Newton's question how can bodies separate in space attract how can bodies separated in space attract each other if there are no elements that bring them into contact the german genius has not been able to answer it because he still thinks of bodies in space garcia de la concha on the contrary does not think of bodies in space, but rather considers them as a particular geometric case of space. The new idea of space that Einstein is now trying to express, probably because Garcia de la Concha's message has reached his hand, is the same idea of space that has long been mathematically expressed in Garcia de la Concha's The Cosmic. 4. Before reaching the true single field, the covariant three-dimensional space of Garcia de la Concha, Einstein has to completely reject the electromagnetic theory on which his work rests. We are sure that he will do so, and the scientific world will receive it as a new creation of his when Garcia de la Concha and his message, marvelous extract of his work, has declared to the world the absurd conception of said theory. And its incompatibility with cosmic processes. 5. The fourth dimension, rejected as necessary in the geometric link of the static generation of Garcia de la Concha's field, is also already one of Einstein's glimpses, and it will be the case painful for these Dominican people, so poor in scientific glories, 
that Einstein will continue undaunted abrogating theories whose priority in conception as well as in demonstration belong to the Dominican savant. What wouldn't be our astonishment when the cable echoing Einstein's statement in his last visit in January of 1931 to the Mount Wilson Observatory brings us these words. Einstein abandons his idea due to the red shifts in the spectrum of certain distant nebulae. See Chapter 16, Gravitation of Light in La Cosmica. He then adds, The purpose of my trip is to obtain help from the scientists at the Mount Wilson Observatory and the California Institute of Technology to solve my biggest problem that is if gravitation, light, and electricity and electromagneticism, magnet, electromagnetism are not different forms of the same thing. That is if gravitation, light, electricity, and electromagnetism are not different forms of the same thing. Here is the reverse of the coin paragraph of the message from Garcia de la Concha to Professor Einstein, published as we have noticed as we have as we have noted above on November 15th of 1929. I have supplanted the dualism prevailing in the electromagnetic theory and the phantasmagoric intervention of the forces, the reality of a single field as the medium in which the universe is contained in all its manifestations of matter, energy, and space. It is a unique field, there is no doubt, like a covariant three-dimensional continuum in the measure and function of this time that contains it. Of time, I repeat, illustrious genius, as that cosmic factor of rest and by which all space and being and depending on said factor it acquires the kinetic capacity of static acceleration. Now it seems possible, declared the wise man at Nottingham, to equally encompass electricity and magnetism in the same point of view with which, with the help of the same mathematical equations. Consequently, we understand the systematic constancy to be fair. In the interest of the recognition of our genius constitutes a duty for all intellectuals, especially in America. The cosmic will make its way on its own. To understand it, it is necessary to love these problems of the highest mathematical disciplines and the most abstract speculations of the spirit despite the fact that their philosophical transcendence lies precisely in setting a new and eminently religious course for the conception of for the conception and definitive verification of everything that until now has been troubling the souls of those initiated in the esoteric mysteries the classic agenda of humanity that has developed around and on the periphery of the problems of the immortality of soul or reincarnation of spirit and matter of esotericism or Aryan philosophy of theosophy, theosophy of theology biology the origin of man from the causal principle of evolution and life finds its most beautiful and most logical explanation in the substratum that is extracted from the cosmic than in any other treatise on nature. Here then is the contribution of our new race, Indo Indo-American, Osvaldo Garcia de la Concha, philosopher, mathematician, physicist, relativist, apostle of education, martyr of school and university autonomy, upright citizen and author of this book who sets out to conquer glory to conquer glory greets you from his Dominican tomb like another great unknown soldier killed on the battlefield of love pain and science <laughs>